Guys, hit the like button, man. What y'all doing? Hit the like button. Metropolis is currently in a state of emergency as over 60,000 illegal immigrants have made their way into the area. Mayor Eric Adams has recently declared that 50% of the hotels in the city are now filled with migrants, and for the first time, we're getting an exclusive look at what the inside of one of these hotels looks like. We sat down with whistleblower Carlos Arellano, who worked inside the Row NYC for the past seven months. This hotel, located one block from Times Square, previously rented rooms for $500 a night. Carlos shares it is now the largest migrant hotel in New York City. So in the hotel, we have close to 5,000 migrants. It hovers between 4,800 to 5,000. It's the biggest hotel out there that's housing migrants. I think it's a four or a five star hotel. This is a four or a five star hotel, guys, that these migrants are staying at in New York City. The row is very expensive. They have, like, it doesn't make any sense to me. Like, these people are being treated. This is a big time hotel in New York City. This is crazy. This is crazy. They housed 5,000 people together in 28 floors. You have the NYC badge, so you are a city employee, correct? Yes, I, I was a side administrator at the Row Hotel. Anything involving this hotel, I was helping run it. One of the first stops migrants make when they are bused in is the Port Authority bus station. It's at this station that they are first dropped off, assigned a hotel, and sent to locations such as the Row NYC. So when a migrant comes to the hotel, what does the process look like? They're taken to our intake center, which is they just register their names, how many kids, and they give them rooms. With our medical team is where they, they determine if they need certain vaccinations, which are usually turned down by the migrants. They don't want them. But a lot of the times they will have some kind of sickness to them. And that's when they're Ubered out to hospitals that work with the migrant hotels. Everything ranging from doctor's visits to medication is paid for for the migrants. I believe we have a document where car seats can also be provided for the migrants as well, correct? Yes, car seats, cribs for newborns. Uh, there's, I want to say, at least two to three babies a week being born at this hotel. What? Two to three babies being born? Man, this is crazy. This is some crazy stuff. The reason why I say it's crazy is because these are literally illegal immigrants. And I get it. They're looking for a better life. I'm not opposed to the idea of people crossing to live a better life. But I'm opposed to the idea of how it's happening in America. And how we have so many other issues that need to be taken care of before we take care of anybody else. And this is, is this all on taxpayer dollars? On top of free medical care and transportation, Carlos also shares that the migrants receive laundry services, housekeeping, and three meals a day alongside their hotel rooms. Anything you can possibly think of, it's being given to them. Around 200 through 300 metro cards a day are given for free. ID services, you know, ID NYC, they have IDs from the city of New York. And what can they do with those IDs? Well, a lot of people in this hotel are working with that ID. Uh, aside from that, they're receiving, I've seen food stamps, cards arrive, a lot of services that are provided to them just for having this ID. And then my other question for you too is, how much does it cost per day to feed these migrants? So in our hotel, it's $383 for 5,000 people. And that's- Bro, look at that. New York City officials says city is spending an estimated $5 million a day on housing, feeding migrants. $5 million a day. That's OD. That's just for one day worth of meals. Listen, man, I, I hate to admit it, but before, I, before, before moving to this nice place, thanks to you guys, I had roaches <laughs> and mouses. Not because we were dirty, but because of where we lived wasn't taken care of. 
There's a lot of places in the Bronx. There's a lot of places in New York City. If you look at New York City overall, it's rat infested. There's so much going on in New York City. There has to be, look, New York City needs to be taken care of. The world, the, the, the America needs to be taken care of before America just takes this on. I'm not opposed. I don't hate these people. I don't know these people. In fact, I love these people. But I think that the way things are being set up is just completely wrong. This is not the right way to go about it, in my opinion. There's so much wrong. There's so much homelessness already happening in New York. There's so many problems in New York with, with crime and all these different things. Bro, what in the world is happening that we have to spend $5 million a day? Like, what? In January of this year, it was reported that Mayor Eric Adams signed a $275 million contract that would fund the migrants staying in hotels across the city for the next six months, a budget of around $55,000 per migrant. However, the city is running out of hotel rooms with Adams stating that some hotels don't want to shelter migrants. Carlos provided us with an inside look at the Row NYC that may give us some insight as to why. The migrants being in those hotels have destroyed them. There's a lot of alcohol in these rooms. Housekeeping is there all week. And they'll clean it, and by the end of the night, it's, it's, there's kids getting drunk together. There's people hooking up with each other. I even have seen reports of certain managers who are using this to get intimate with people. It seems like the... the are you kidding me, bro? This is crazy. No way. Look at this. This is wild. This is how they're treating America? Chill. Nah, this is bad work. I have seen reports of certain managers who are using this to get intimate with people. It seems like the, the hotel is one big party. There's multiple guns in these rooms as well. The alarming thing is that this hotel is meant to be a family hotel. One situation that I'll never forget was I was on my lunch break and I was at Walgreens and while I was in line, I saw one of the migrants sticking alcohol into their children's backpack. And they stick them in the children's backpack because they know we don't, we wouldn't dare to check a, ch a child's backpack. They Yo, this is crazy story. Yo, this is some crazy stories, bro. We do this kind of stuff all the time. Uh, whether it be drugs, whether it be alcohol, whether it be a gun. They stick it in the strollers, under the baby. During just our short time investigating the location outside of the hotel, we ourselves witnessed a migrant so drunk he could barely stand. But alcohol isn't the only issue at the Row NYC. Carlos shared incident reports and internal text messages. I literally have a friend. I gotta, I gotta hit this guy up. I had a friend who was a bartender there at the Row Hotel. We used to go to the Row Hotel a lot. Me and my guy Tone, we used to go to the Row Hotel. We used to have a good time there. So now that whole hotel is full of this? Look at this. Wow. Hotel, we, we ourselves, ourselves witnessed a migrant so drunk he could barely stand. But alcohol isn't the only issue at the Row NYC. Carlos shared incident reports and internal text messages detailing gunmen on the premises, children getting drunk, and migrants stealing from local businesses surrounding the hotel. You were actually showing me some text messages between a social worker about a drunk 10-year-old in this hotel. Can you talk to us about what happened there? Yeah, it was a drunk 10-year-old who was caught with a 14 and a 12 year old and all three of them were intoxicated. And when we looked them up in the system, the parents had checked out two days ago. So the parents just left them there? Yeah, the parents will leave the kids unattended in the hotel and they think it's okay to leave for a day or two, sometimes even a week. And you actually did provide us with a couple of incident reports. Let's go ahead and go over some of them, uh, specifically the incident report where you have gunmen walking around the hotel. Uh, talk to me about that situation. We heard a security guard start yelling, uh, there's a gun on site, there's a gun on site. It was probably an upset person that we had kicked out of the hotel and it sent the whole hotel into a panic. And this is an everyday thing. I myself have been assaulted. I've seen other people get assaulted. I've had 
threats saying, you know, we'll be waiting for you guys outside. There's been times where staff has had to be, you know, escorted to their cars, to their to their trains. Because the migrants are threatening them. Yeah. And, and why is that happening? Because they want to get away with doing whatever the hell they want to do inside the hotels. There's one incident. It was my very first week working in this hotel. And it was a husband who was beating up his wife. It was my job and others' jobs to separate them. The brother of the husband shows up and starts telling the wife, why would you report him? Now they're going to kick him out of the hotel and deport him out of the country, which didn't happen. And then the brother rushes in and hits the wife on the face as well. Yo, nah. That is absolutely... See, I knew things were going on in the city, obviously. Because I'm personally... I There's so much going on in the Bronx already that I personally... I can't lie to you guys. I just stopped caring about a lot of stuff. But looking into this and realizing that this is what's happening right now with these people who are getting a great opportunity, right, overall, coming in here illegally and being allowed in a five-star hotel, yet they treated like they're not even grateful. Like, yo, you're supposed to do this. You guys are supposed to let us here. It's like, yo, hold on, bro. Like, what? And then you got people hitting their wives, their brothers. But look at that. This sounds crazy. And as the hotel staff, what were you guys able to do with these two? The solution always is, oh, they're intoxicated, send them to the hospital to sober up, and then they come right back into the hotel. It's either the hospital or it's either send them to Port Authority and let him get a, let the husband who's intoxicated get another hotel paid by the taxpayers in New York. Often at times there was migrants causing chaos, but with shoplifting. The one instant where I showed you that video, uh, aside from being caught shoplifting, they started getting physical. And a lot of the times it was, you know, go calm the migrant down, get him inside the hotel. We also spoke to the manager of the store right next to Roe, who shared how the migrants have been affecting businesses in the area. So, there was previously tourists staying in this hotel, mm. and now it's migrants, so you're not having the same amount of business coming through this area. No, same. Let's yes, turn it down. Less than 50% the down. So, uh, I'm not against, I told you I'm not against them, but I don't like to our business area. Take, take them another area, side of city or another place, not the middle of the city. We are facing, but we are the business, with the, not only my store. All area business is down for this one. All of Only these. this area, 8th Avenue, 3, 4 area, they are busy. You can ask any people, they'll say no business is down here. On top of the violence, guns, and drug and alcohol abuse, Carlos shares that the infrastructure of the hotel is also starting to crumble. This hotel is pretty much collapsing. One thing that I saw was the maintenance requests. And in, in these maintenance requests, it ranged from mold in the ceilings, to mold in the walls, to power outages in 10 rooms and one floor. The electrical infrastructure in this hotel is fried. Uh, we have everything from power. Respectfully, that hotel will never be the same, but that's on them. They made the decision. I don't know what happened. Uh, maybe they're getting a lot of money for this, but I don't think that hotel will ever be the same, bro. Outages to fires going off. The lobby ceiling, we've had that fall, and it's been flat out said by every agency in that hotel that they're just waiting for it to, to collapse. But the city does not want to start the process of getting them out because it's 5,000 people. So it's either going to start a riot or during the riot, it's going to collapse the hotel because they don't want to leave the hotel. They love the location. Who wouldn't love, you know, living free next to Times Square? A lot of the migrants talk. Imagine this. Imagine having all types of gangs, killings, all these different things, different types of cultures in New York City, and then just bringing even more people 
who aren't accustomed to a first world living coming from a third world country where they're doing all type of crazy shit to just to survive. They're not used to this type of life. They're not used to this more civilized society. And you expect them to adapt and behave in, in our way. It doesn't work like that. These people are used to having to survive. Well, they're literally fleeing where they're from. That's number one. So they're in survival mode. So then you bring them into the middle of the city. Give them everything for free. Like, bro, what, what is going on here? Told me they, they, they could see the ball drop from their window. The media has been reporting that one of the main reasons that migrants are overwhelming progressive cities is due to Republican governors such as Texas Governor Greg Abbott busing migrants into these cities. However, when asked if the migrants are happy to be in New York or if they even want to leave, this is what Carlos had to say. If they want to leave the city of New York, they're given a bus ticket. Uh, real quick, I'm going to say shout out to Case, who just sent $10, the $10 donation by Case. The U.S. will be flooded by peoples of alien cultures who's uh hold on let me read this out loud will eventually over uh will eventually overwhelm white america people with no concept of what the u.s constitution stands for i don't know what that means bro white america what do you mean by white america <laughs> u.s will be flooded by peoples of alien cultures who will eventually overwhelm white america I don't know what that means, bro. What, what does that mean? White America. America isn't is a majority white country, but I don't think being civilized just relates to white people anymore. I think you have people like me. You have people who are black, people who are Hispanic as well, who aren't. So I, I may have missed your point here. And who gives them that? The city of New York. Is, is, is paying, paying for, for it, it and, and we are, are giving them that. They get, they get tired, tired of New York, York City, City and they, they move on to the next city. city. Chicago, Philadelphia, Washington, Washington they're, 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 they're traveling around. Would you, Would you say, say that the majority, the majority of them want to stay in New York or, or are they, they trying, trying to go, go somewhere else? else? So, so they, they come, come to New York, York wanting, wanting to go somewhere else, else but at the same time, they see everything that's being given to them and that they're right next to Times Square. So they decide to stay and they don't want to leave. And their mindset is that this hotel situation are never going to close. And the city does nothing to tell them, hey, eventually the money runs out. When the money runs out, these hotels will close. Carlos has worked in U.S. Immigration Services for the past five years, and he's the same whistleblower who came forward last year when he was working for MVM Inc. and realized that migrant children were being handed off to unvetted adults throughout the U.S. He has also worked as a contractor under organizations such as Customs and Border Patrol and the Office of Refugee Resettlement. However, despite being in the industry for so long, to stay, and they don't want to leave. And their mindset is that this hotel situation are never going to close. And the city does nothing to tell them, hey, eventually the money runs out. When the money runs out, these hotels will close. Carlos has worked in U.S. Immigration Services for the past five years, and he's the same whistleblower who came forward last year when he was working for MVM Inc. and realized that migrant children were being handed off to unvetted adults throughout the U.S. He has also worked as a contractor under organizations such as Customs and Border Patrol and the Office of Refugee Resettlement. However, despite being in the industry for so long, he shares that this is one of the worst situations he's ever seen. I've never seen a situation as bad as this one, which is why I'm coming out. I'm not doing this anonymous, anonymously anymore. I'm attaching my name, my face to this because it's that bad. I've been doing this for five years and in my five years, this has been the worst experience by far. The city of New York does not know what they're doing and it's only gonna get worse from here. Talk to the viewers as well about what coming forward with this type of story means for you. It's years of relationships, friendships that are gonna be gone the minute this airs, but it's all worth it 
if I could do some kind of good. And that good is exposing how horrible the situation is in New York City regarding the migrants in June at the Royal Hotel. The city of New York should be ashamed of themselves for what they did. And this was a terrible decision to make, was this hotel. For the most part, there's no, there's no pressure, no rush, no, no urgency of fixing the situation. It's just keep paying for their hotel rooms, keep, came, keep paying for their food, and hoping the situation fixes itself, but it's not going to fix itself. When the day comes that they tell them either you, you have to move to a new location, this, this site is gonna close, the migrants are not gonna understand. So there's no way to go about it. Everybody who's staying in that hotel is in this chat group. So the minute you try to move, not just one floor, the minute you try to move one room, they're gonna put it in the chat and the word's gonna spread through the whole hotel and they're not gonna go quietly. They're not gonna go calmly, peacefully. The city of New York does not know how to handle any of this. I Bro, the city of New York can't even handle crime. They can't even handle rats or mice. Like, the city of New York can't even handle deranged people on the trains. Like, a lot going on here. But this is an L for New York. And this is an L for the migrants as well, for them to be treating where they're staying. And I'm not saying that's all of them. Obviously, not all of them. But there's some things happening here that just need to be addressed. And I think this video is doing a good job at addressing them.